Happy New Year, everyone. And、um, it's been a very long time, and I'm surprisingly happy to be back. I did have to take this really, really long break to get back on my feet. I had too many things to juggle, and I wasn't going through a good time last year. So I decided to put all of my projects on ice. And just focused on myself and only that. And I'm glad I did that because、uh, 2020 ended up being like my favorite year at 2020. Shit, 2023. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm still obviously in 2020, right? So 2023 was my best year ever. Now, I want to start this year with a video discussing sexual orientation, and I think it is really needed.、Um, I'm constantly on Twitter or X mats with,、uh, funny enough, the younger generation who have a lot of confusion around sexual orientation and its behaviors, or their behaviors, should I say. If you've never been on this channel, my name is Jen and I do discuss homosexuality and the negative effects that the trans rights movement has had on the gay right, rights movement、uh, in recent years. And I'm quite vocal about it on X or Twitter too. So if you want to check that out, my handle is at CBuxRules. Now, I don't claim to be an expert.、Um, there's many things I don't know, there is many、uh, things I don't have the answer to. However, I do have experience that I would like to share and discuss、uh, from my, my perspective as a grown woman who grew up with gender dysphoria and also grew up in the cult of Scientology. Now, reaching adulthood, I came to the realization that I was a homosexual, and it's not something that I would have wanted or chosen for myself, but it nevertheless is. And I did struggle a little bit on that journey too, which I will eventually share with you. Now, let's dive in and talk about the facts of sexual orientation. Now, I want to take the time to clear up a few things because I have seen, especially online, some sort of confusion the, ge- the younger generation h a v e around sexual orientation, sexuality, and sexual preferences. And although the last two can be fluid and change over time for many people, sexual orientation does not. So I'll explain very simply what is sexual orientation. Remember that when people cannot simply explain terms or definitions, that normally means that they do not fully understand the subject at hand. Also, when somebody seeks to confuse you, they're normally trying to trick you or take advantage of you. Now, these are probably not absolutes, but I have found them quite useful in everyday life. So, what is sexual orientation and why do we need these labels? Your sexual orientation is basically your capacity for sexual arousal towards either the male sex or the female sex as either a male person or a female person. Why do we need it? We need it because it is one of the most unintrusive ways、um, to communicate a sexual boundary. Yes, you can be discriminated against. Um, for your sexual orientation. So sometimes it is just safer not to divulge. However, it is the most unintrusive way to tell somebody else something that is very intimate and personal to you. Now, adults engage in sexual activity, whether it is for recreational purposes or procreation purposes. When we have sex, we stimulate sexual organs. If you're not doing that, then you're not having sex. You're probably just doing foreplay. And it's not to say that sexual organs are the only place where you can、um, have or feel sexual pleasure. That is not what I'm saying. Now, that differs in heterosexual relationships. Where it, there is something called heavy petting, which is stimulating each other's sex organs,、um, but it's not classed as sex. Now, technically, sex does need intercourse to class itself as sex. In homosexual activities,、um, intercourse doesn't always happen, but you know, we still class whatever sexual encounters that we had as sex. Now, the very first step. To safe sex, regardless of your sexual orientation or your sexual preferences, is that you need to be aroused. Some people are only sexually aroused by stimulating the female sex organ. Some people are only 
sexually aroused by stimulating the male sex organ and the rest get sexually aroused by stimulating both sex organs. Now, I don't mean to sound obnoxious uh, when I say this, but I do not want to entertain any discussions around sexual abuse in the comment section should you decide to leave a comment. I personally think it's about time that we stop linking sexual abuse and safe sex and also pornography. Safe sex is safe sex and abuse is abuse, whether it is consented to or not. Pretending that they have a symbiotic relationship is pretty much the end goal of every abuser in the world. How can you know that you've been abused if your whole life you've been taught that abuse was sex or even love? So that's the type of confusion abusers would like to instill in you so that they can keep on abusing. So I'll say it again, be aware of the people who seek to confuse you. Okay, so sexual orientation is um, or are the label which politely expresses to others which of the two sexes you get an arousal to to perform safe sex. That is its sole purpose. It doesn't mean that you will be aroused or sexually aroused by every member of that sex, but it does mean that you will only be aroused by a member of that sex. In recent years, trans rights activists have been pushing into mainstream society that sexual orientation is based on masculinity or femininity and not on sex. And that is completely incorrect. Plenty of lesbians still won't sleep with trans identifying males, even though they're trying to be as feminine as possible. A heterosexual women still won't sleep with trans identifying females, despite them quote unquote passing as men. The same phenomenon can be seen with heterosexual men who have on many occasions been violent to or even murdered trans identifying males after they've been deceived. This would not happen if sexual orientation was indeed based on gender. It is based on sex. Moreover, gender, so masculinity and femininity are social constructs. They vary from culture to culture and that's why they can be manipulated and changed. We watch a masculine man suddenly start adopting Western feminine routines and expression. And after all, gender is ever only expressed through clothing styles, hairstyles and accessories. We applaud him and cheer him on, but guess what does not change? His sexual orientation. This man was divorced by his wife with whom he sired children. And the next thing I know is that he's on my feed on a lesbian only dating app. Now, which of the two sexual orientation have an exclusive sexual arousal towards the female sex? We've got heterosexuality in males and homosexuality in females. Now, I don't want to sound too obvious, but clothes and hazardous accessories do come off during sex. And what you're left with is somebody naked in front of you. Now this person will either have a penis or a vagina, and you're either going to be very excited about that or very disappointed. If seeing either still excites you, you've not transcended to a, another spiritual realm, uh, you've not become holy, you're just bisexual. And oh, let's play a game here. I will give £200 to the person in the comment section who tells me what the third or more sexes are and if they could provide a uh, description of them. Until this happens, and I'm sure of £200, there are only two sexes. Now, when this naked person is in front of you, what should happen is that you should have a very enthusiastic urge to get to know them on a very intimate level. If you're hesitating or not aroused or psyching yourself with gritted teeth, do yourself a favor and stop everything right there. A decent partner will never make you feel guilty for stopping an encounter, a sexual encounter, at any point. If they do, make sure that you see it for the red flag that it is and remove this person from your life. And this is true even if you're technically sexually aroused by 
members of that sex. I have slept with women who, you know, I wasn't aroused or keen or very enthusiastic about it. And honestly, it always ended up in terrible, terrible sex. However, with the right woman, my body lit up like a firework display. And that's it. That's really how simple it is. Does your body as a male or female light up in the presence of your same sex, your opposite sex, or both? So here are the three sexual orientation. Homosexuality, sexual arousal to your same sex, also known as being a lesbian or a gay man or same sex attracted. Heterosexuality, sexual arousal to your opposite sex, also known as being straight. Bisexuality, sexual arousal to both sexes. Now, I do agree with the addition of the sexuality called pansexual because not every bisexual person will actually find um, well a transgendered body attractive. However, pansexual people do welcome that in their sexual boundaries. So really, it's not that hard. If you look down between your legs and you have a vulva and a vagina and you only get sexually aroused by stimulating vulvas and vaginas, you're same-sex attracted or homosexual. The term for you will be lesbian. If you're aroused by stimulating penises during sex, either exclusively or in addition to stimulating vulvas and vaginas, you're not a lesbian. You will fall into the heterosexual category should your sexual arousal be exclusive or in the bisexual category if it's not. By the way, if you live in Tralalala land, whatever mutilation that you've done to your body does not count. We'll cover that in another video. Now, let's quickly address the purposes of labels. Labels are used to categorize things or behaviors for quick access or sorting. For example, somebody who plays sports in a competitive and professional manner is labeled an athlete. Now, I cannot adopt that label if I do not behave the same as they do. That is their label. Same thing with sexual orientation. How you behave determines your sexual orientation, therefore your label. The three sexual orientations that we have are labels to categorize sexual different sexual behaviors. For example, the trans rights activists do claim that lesbians can be aroused by the opposite sex if he identifies as a woman. Now, the label lesbian cannot have the same behavior as the label for bisexuality. The label lesbians includes arousal to the opposite sex as well as your same sex. There's a different label for that. That's bisexuality. So there is just no need for it. You cannot label the same behavior with two different labels. We might as well not have the labels for sexual orientation if every sexual orientation behaves the same way. Okay, so before I did mention that sexual orientation was also a sexual boundary. Labels which set any sexual boundaries are very, very important to have. Now, trans activists normally have this knee-jerk reaction to hearing the word boundaries. Um, you know, I've been called small-minded for it, um, somehow stupid, um, or stopping other people from exploring for themselves. Let me clarify. Boundaries are for other people. They're not meant to keep you in. When you're at home and you're surrounded by your fences and gates, that doesn't mean that you have to stay in your house. You're free to go over, cross over your boundaries and go touch grass, see friends, etc. Boundaries, your boundaries are not meant to keep you in. They're meant to keep other people out. Having boundaries does not imprison you in any way. However, it does make you safe or safer. It is not a restriction to you. It's a restriction to everyone else. Now, people who would like access to something do not like to be restricted. Remember that. When I tell someone that I'm a lesbian, I do not do it to look hip or cool. I don't do it to stop myself from sleeping with men 
That's what political lesbians do. When we actual lesbians say it, we say it to set a sexual boundaries in a social setting. We are saying that we are only sexually aroused by members of our same sex. Therefore, we will welcome sexual advances from them and them only. And we will be extremely uncomfortable from receiving advances from the opposite sex, however they identify. Sexual orientation is not about how you feel, it's about how you experience sexual arousal. I am definitely not here to tell you what you should be sexually aroused to. You know that for yourself. I am simply correcting the label that you use should you get the behaviors incorrect. Sexual orientation is not an identity to adopt. As much as I would love that to be the case, I would totally identify out of lesbianism if I could. You can judge me if you want, but I would have wished that I had a simpler aspect to my life on top of everything else that I have going on. I mean, I'm sure other people can relate the amount of people, well, especially straight women, I have heard wishing that there were lesbians, but of course that's not how sexuality works. They, they won't suddenly become lesbians because they wished it. But I'm grateful that women like this are insane enough to adopt the lesbian label and um, start calling themselves lesbians like queer women do, as well as um, political lesbians. For you to adopt a label, you must practice its behavior. The behavior in sexual orientation cannot be faked. So only you know which sex really turns you on. Whether you are honest to yourself and others about it, that's a different question. And honestly, I will not judge you because at some point in my life, I would have related to you. I will end the video with this. Trans women are not women, they're men. Therefore, they cannot adopt the lesbian um, label. Any male cannot be lesbian. The only time a lesbian sleeps with the opposite sex is when she has been coerced or made feel ashamed of her sexual orientation. And um, also if for any reason she decided to experiment on her own accord with the opposite sex. It's perfectly acceptable for people not to act on their sexual urges, including their sexual arousal. Political lesbians, please take note. You can never sleep with a man ever again in your life, but that doesn't make you a lesbian since you still retain your sexual arousal towards the, the opposite sex. Sexual orientation does not and cannot change. Now there's a phenomenon happening within the political lesbian circles where women who are still sexually aroused by the opposite sex claiming to be lesbians suppress their sexual urges so much so that they then st start attacking actual lesbians for our experiencing actual sexual arousal towards other women. And that's just not cool. It's actually homophobia. Now also bisexual women in relationships with lesbians. You're not lesbians because you've been in a relationship for 25 years with another lesbian. You're still bisexual since you are capable of sexual arousal towards the opposite sex. You can be a straight woman, hate men, and never sleep with them ever again. You can be a bisexual woman, hate men, and never sleep with them again. Lesbianism isn't no sex with men. It is being capable of sexual arousal towards our same sex exclusively. It has nothing to do with men and it has everything to do with sexual arousal towards women. If your sexual arousal to women isn't exclusive, it is not lesbianism. So I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to do that. Like I said before, you can also follow me on X or Twitter at, at CboxRules. I'm Melody, I don't fall in line, and I swear all the time. There's probably a high chance that you might not like me at all. And um, the beauty of it is that I have stopped caring about that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but if we do vibe, it'll be something quite special. So in the meantime, stand up for yourself. Don't be good, be loud and terrorize. See you next time.